Our next segment is about breaking stereotypes. It is the story of a 73-year-old Japanese-American whose life in Harlem turned her into a political activist. She was inspired by Malcolm X, and she's been fighting for human rights ever since the 60s. I came to Harlem at a very good time politically. It was 1960 when everything was popping because black people were fighting for civil rights, not only down south, but up here. And so I think when we came here to Harlem and all this was happening, it was so good for our family. I mean, we all became uh, well, educated, you know, politicalized. The question we put to this commission is, how does the government... It was 1960 when Yuri Kachiyama, her late husband Bill, and their six children moved into the newly built projects on 126th Street in Harlem. We joined Harlem Parents Committee, which is not a radical group, but it's a very good uh, civil rights organization, and they were fighting for better schools. We met all the civil rights kind of people. But then when we would go down the streets and hear street speakers, well, we got more interested in what was happening on the streets, and that would be more like a uh, Malcolm X group. She met Malcolm in 1963 at a court hearing. She had been arrested while protesting. Malcolm X seemed so radical, and if you remember way back then, all the media just crucified him. They tried to smash him, make him seem like such a hate monger, when all he was doing, he was just being very pro-black and fighting for his own people. I joined his organization and used to go to the Audubon to hear him speak and, and also uh, began going to his liberation school. But he came here to meet with some of the writers of the Hiroshima Nagasaki World Peace Study Mission because they wanted to meet Malcolm more than any other person in the United States. I think they were curious to know why the U.S. government would be so afraid of just one black leader. After that meeting in her home, Yuri and Malcolm became good friends. She treasures the postcards he sent from his travels. He sent about 11 of them from about nine different countries. And uh, this one is from Kenya. It says, greetings from Kenya, the home of those great African patriots, the Mau Mau freedom fighters. And then from Kuwait, he sent this one saying, still trying to travel and broaden my scope since I've learned what a mess can be made by narrow-minded people. My priority would be to fight against polarization because this whole society is so polarized. I think there are so many issues that all people of color should come together on. And there are forces in this country who want this polarization to take place. As a woman, and specifically an Asian-American woman, she is very unique. And when we talked to people when we were doing this project, time and time again, people talked about her ability to work across, I guess what you would call, cultural lines. Pat Saunders has known Yuri for 30 years. She has documented her political activism in a film titled Yuri Kachiyama, Passion for Justice. She and her husband, Bill, her late husband, have um, a history of what they would call open houses, and I don't know if she talked about this, going back to the 50s actually, but really got active in the 60s with having weekly gatherings at her house. Bill and Yuri met during World War II when all Japanese Americans were removed from the West Coast, taken from their homes, and sent to internment camps around the country. Yuri's father died shortly after being imprisoned by the FBI. The internment didn't politicize me, sadly. It took me a long time. I was not political until I came to Harlem, and then everything seemed to change. In her 40 years of political activism, Yuri has marched with the Vietnam anti-war movement, picketed to get jobs for blacks, Hispanics, and Asians, demonstrated with the Young Lords, taken over public buildings with the Black Panthers. She was even arrested for the 1977 siege of the Statue of Liberty, an effort to bring attention to the Puerto Rican independence movement. How long do they plan to stay there? They're not leaving until the four remaining prisoners are, are free. 
many members of those movements are now in prison, and they are now the focus of Yuri's current work. Well, I feel that political prisoners are the reminders of what the struggle is about in America, and they are really the heartbeat of struggle. And yet it is so sad to think that so many people do not even know about these people. Yuri says there is no retirement for a political activist, so she will continue her work for as long as she is able.